Well, hello everyone. We are getting started. I'm just checking our connection. That is why you don't see me. All right, let me go see if you can see me now. Hello, welcome back. Um, welcome back to another episode of Colavita Cooking Live. It is Tuesday at 3 p.m. So we are here and we are making the things that you vote for. It's very exciting. We have polls. I hope you've been participating in our polls. Oh good, you can see me. Very, very exciting. What do you think that is in the frame right there? I think it might be a light. Hmm. Let's see if we can move it, shall we? Okay. All right. So, welcome back. And yes, like I said, I hope you've been participating in our polls because they are tons of fun. You vote, I make what you vote for. And today, you guys voted for the strawberry chutney olive oil crostata. I'm very excited about this recipe, I have to tell you. Um, so, Throw me a note in the comments if you are here. Yes, I am glad it is the strawberry recipe too. I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and I'll be able to see your comments in Facebook and we have our wonderful social media manager, Camelia, who will be uh, manning the comments on Instagram and throwing them over into Facebook so I can kind of see exactly what's happening, hopefully. All right, so baking with olive oil. I love baking with olive oil. Um, and this strawberry crustata recipe is really simple and really adaptable. And I'm gonna show you how to make an olive oil pie crust. I know it's not like a butter crust. So I'm gonna show you how that looks, what to watch for, um, and what the best ways are to make that happen. So what is a crostata anyway? It's a very good question. Um, a croissant is kind of like a pie, but it's like a free form pie. It's a pie for people that don't want to make a meticulous lattice top. Um, it's a pie for people that just want to like throw something together and have it be wonderful in its kind of misshapen glory. It's not perfect, but it is delicious and it is beautiful. Um, it's like that Japanese word, wabi-sabi, where things are a little just imperfect and there's beauty in that. And you can fill it with a lot of things. Today we are making a strawberry chutney and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to turn on my stove top here and we're going to get that warmed up. Ah, yes. Hi, Trisha. Hi, Arlene. I'm so glad you're back. And Nina. What's cooking? Strawberry crostata is cooking. All right, so I'm gonna get, I have like a medium, medium pot here and I'm gonna put that over medium heat. And what I'm gonna add to that are two cups of strawberries that I've quartered, I've hauled them, I've taken off the stems and you know, cut them into quarters. Now you could use fresh strawberries or you could use frozen. If you use frozen, I would recommend thawing them, bringing them to room temperature and draining them a bit to get off any excess water that, you know, has accumulated from freezing. So I'm going to add these to our pot. There they go. And now is strawberry season. So, you know, this is the time to get the strawberries because they are sweet, they are ripe, they are just ready to go. So I'm going to, oops, Clearly our little burner wasn't on. There we go. Now it is on. Kind of. Oh, I know what the problem is. This pot does not work on this burner. Give me a hot second. Ah! <laughs> Okay. 
Hopefully you did not hear all of that crashing that happened in the background there. That would have been bad. Okay, now we have contact. Whew, I forgot that my beautiful fancy pot here does not work on this burner. It's tragic, but true. Let me put that there. <laughs> okay, pick your own strawberries. It is fun. Hi, Mary Eileen. Welcome back. Would this be considered a dessert? Yes, this would definitely be considered a dessert. I'd even consider it a snack because I plan on snacking on it this afternoon. So definitely a dessert. There should be ice cream or whipped cream or both of those things involved to top on it. So I'm going to get my pan heated up to medium. And my strawberries that I've quartered and hulled are in my pan. And to that, I am going to add uh, a quarter cup of sugar, just regular granulated sugar. I'm going to put that in there. And that's going to start to break down the strawberries and they're going to release their juices and it's going to become kind of like a jam. So it's going to take a little while. Well, we're all about patience here. So I want to just mix that up and we're going to get that going. Now I'm also going to add to this. So a chutney, not exactly a jam. It's a little bit more loose. You know, I'm not ready to make this into a, a solid jam where I might add pectin, additional pectin to the fruit and that kind of thing. And it's also going to have a kick. The kick here is ginger. So this is about a tablespoon of grated ginger. And I'm going to put that into the strawberries and mix that up as well. And then I'm going to add a little bit of fresh thyme. I have lemon thyme here from my own garden. Very exciting. The garden is doing fantastically in spite of the chipmunk manifestation that I seem to have. I know. Um, so we're going to get that going. So we're going to let that simmer. And then what I have here is a teaspoon of cornstarch. So cornstarch acts as a thickening agent. And I'm going to add one tablespoon of water to it. And I'm just going to mix that up so it's all dissolved. Now it just kind of looks like milk. And once this gets to a good place, I'm going to add that in along with some, a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice and some lemon zest. So those are the things that we'll be adding. I'm going to put these off to the side. Yes, fresh strawberry ice cream would be amazing. Okay, so one thing I like to do while this is mixing, whoops, I like to make a mess, clearly. But I like to kind of break them up with my wooden spoon. So if your pieces are a little big, you know, I can just kind of smash them down. Gives me something to do while they're cooking also. Clearly I like to be busy. Um, so we're going to let that happen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smash them occasionally. And while it is happening, I'm going to divert your attention for a moment. You guys still with me? Sorry about the pan, I forgot. The induction burner doesn't like that other pan. I have a very exciting announcement for you guys, one that I've been waiting to tell you about. And that is, um, Cola Vita has a new label design. I know, this is it. This is our 17 fluid ounce premium selection extra virgin olive oil. And for reference, let me see if I have an old bottle. I do. This is the bottle you have grown to know and love. And we have revised the labeling to be a bit more modern. It's going to stand out on the shelf. And we're really excited about it. It is the same wonderful olive oil that you have known for years, but you know, wanted to tell you because you're going to see it hitting shelves. We don't want any confusion. So this has become this and uh, yeah, it's really exciting. I think it's going to look beautiful on the shelf. So when you see it, let us know, take a picture and tag us at Cola Vida USA. We'd love to see it out in the wild and in your kitchens. That too. 
Okay. So as you can see, my strawberries, they are sim simmering. Um, oh my goodness. You can definitely drizzle this with a balsamic. Absolutely. And our balsamic will be lovely. I would say the glaze would be great with I have some, so I can definitely do that for you later, Arlene. That is a great idea. Strawberries and balsamic. I mean, thumbs up, you know, instead of time, um, if you're running low on time, <laughs> sorry, I can't resist the time jokes. It's really hard for me. Um, you could use basil because strawberry and basil is really lovely. And I would just chop those up really finely and add those in instead of the thyme if you like. I used a lemon thyme, um, but you could use either the regular or lemon. I thought lemon would be nice since I am in fact adding some lemon zest and juice to this. So yeah. All right, smashing my strawberries. This is coming along rather nicely. I actually think that it goes a bit faster in a pan like this. So maybe this is a happy accident. You know, we have more surface area here. So I'm gonna add my lemon juice and lemon zest and mix that in. All right. I'm gonna give this a few more minutes and then I'm gonna add the cornstarch and then we are going to simmer it just a little longer. Okay, I need to evenly smash my strawberries. It's like an obsession. All right, so that is good. Now, the reason that you're gonna cook your filling for a pie, so strawberries, all fruits, they have a lot of water in them, right? And you don't want your pie to be soggy. Soggy pies, is that's not a happy pie. Um, so what we are doing here is we're kind of cooking out the water and thickening it so we know what liquid we're dealing with. I want to see it. I don't want secret liquid that these strawberries are harboring that is going to make my pie soggy. You know, I want it to be all out in the open. So I'm going to add my teaspoon of cornstarch that I have dissolved in one tablespoon of water. Ta-da! Get it all in there. Okay. Cementilia on Instagram says, like the new label. Well, thank you. That's awesome. I'm so glad. It's pretty cool, I have to say. I'm very excited about it. I've been having some fun taking new photos for our marketing um, with the new label. Hopefully, you'll be able to see some of those on our recipe website soon. Speaking of our recipe website, if you haven't checked that out lately, we have a lot of fun stuff. We have a whole section on Father's Day recipes. It's a series of four burgers, not all of them meat, for Father's Day. So if you're looking to celebrate your dad or someone else's dad or just go outside and grill something burger-like, we have all those recipes. And we also have a section on marinades, which is really handy for this time of year. I hope you're all, you know, even if you're not able to get outside and grill, you can still marinate and have a really, you know, deliciously flavorful uh, meal in, you know, not so, with minimal effort. It does the work for you while you do other things, like make strawberry crostata. Okay, so this is getting pretty thick, and I'm going to take it off the heat. Now, what you would do is let this cool. We do not want to put hot filling into a cold pie crust. Bad, bad, bad. So we're going to let it cool. I actually made one yesterday and refrigerated it overnight. Magic kitchen. Yay. So I have that ready to go. So we're just going to let that cool. And I'm going to have extra chutney for my toast in the morning. Okay. And now we're going to make our crust. <laughs> So, an olive oil crust is, an olive oil crust is kind of like a Play-Doh consistency. It's very workable. Um, you don't have to worry about, you know, cutting cold butter into the flour. 
but it's not the same consistency as a butter crust. Um, it is delicious though. I love it. Um, it's like, to me, it's like, I know it's not butter, but it tastes like a shortbread cookie and it has a little bit of that olive oil flavor. And I think it's fantastic. You can make this crust sweet or savory. We are going to do the sweet version today. And what I'm starting out with is one and a half cups of all purpose flour. Dump it in there. Okay. And then I've got three tablespoons of granulated sugar and a teaspoon of salt. Okay. We are going to pulse this all together. that our sugar and our salt is all incorporated nicely distributed through the flour and then through this I am going to stream in one third cup of our Colavita premium selection definitely use the new label when I was talking about that when I was making this <laughs> So I'm going to stream this in as it's running and I'm going to do this gradually. I don't want to like just pour it all in. So let's get this going. Whee! Okay. Watching and waiting. We're at the halfway point and I just want to pause it so you can see. So I've got some of these big chunks of uh, crust that are starting to form along with these little pieces. So it is kind of starting to look like a butter crust and I don't want to add too much oil. Yeah, that looks good. I think just a tiny bit more and I'm going to pulse. That's good. Okay, I didn't use the entire third of a cup. So I want you to see when these little like pebbles of crust form in here, that is really what you're looking at. And you can see if, if I squish it, it'll push itself together. So that's what we're looking for. Now, what I also want to add is a few tablespoons of ice water. I have about three. This is very cold water and I'm gonna pulse that in now. Just a tiny bit. It's about one. And we're gonna do three. Okay, that is perfect. And that kind of just adds a little bit more moisture um, without adding too much oil and it's gonna bring it all together. So that's gonna be really important. Just a tiny bit. Okay. You know, when you do stuff like this, it's really important to use your eyes and just watch how things are coming together. I can see this and I can tell this is going to make a good crust. Now let's take it out of there, shall we? Okay. I'm going to put it on this piece of parchment paper. It is looking fantastic. Welcome, Michael. Will the oil separate if you let it sit overnight? That is an excellent question, Arlene. The answer is no. The crostata that I'm going to show you that I finished, I made that crust a week ago. Yes. And it is totally fine. So I um, have one that I made and refrigerated overnight and it's perfectly fine. It doesn't separate and which is interesting. Um, but if you, I think if you mix it well like that, you're not adding too much. It, it won't separate. So I'm just going to get this out of here. Now, another thing that's very important to do, you know, similar to butter, you want to refrigerate this before you form it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just form it into a little bit of a ball and then I'm going to press it down into a disc like this. It's a nice little coin shape. And I'm going to wrap this in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for at least an hour. 
Honestly, I like it to be pretty cold. So I refrigerate mine overnight. You could put it in the freezer for a little while. You don't want it to be break cold though. So I, I like the fridge because sometimes I tend to forget that I've left things in the freezer. Okay. So this goes in the fridge. And I have one that I made yesterday and as you can see the oil has not separated at all it's perfect and I'm excited to roll this out so a couple of things about rolling out olive oil <laughs> does Ooh, I didn't like that okay so I have here a piece of parchment paper that I'm going to roll it out onto let's see Ah, repeat what I'm making for newcomers. Hi newcomers, how are you? I am making a strawberry chutney olive oil crostata. And a crostata is a pie, like a loosely shaped pie, not a perfect pie. It's beautiful in its imperfections. One thing I forgot to do here, because I was talking about pie, amazing color. It is. Isn't it a gorgeous color? It really is. That's that olive oil coming through. It's a really nice golden color. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift up gently. If it breaks a little bit, don't worry. Don't panic. Okay. I'm going to put a little flour on my parchment. Now I have found through making this about three or four times now, <laughs> no, not joking. It's okay. Um, that the best way to roll this out is not to flour the top and roll it out. It's going to stick anyway. Um, and then you're going to get too much flour in your crust. So I actually take the plastic wrap that I wrapped it in, put it over the top, and then roll. And then because there's so much oil in the dough, the plastic wrap is not going to stick. So. Here we go. We are gonna roll, and we can push those cracks back together while we're rolling. So, is it considered similar to a galette? Yes, I believe while the galette is French, the crostata is Italian. So I believe that is exactly right. So I am going for a nice circular shape here. Actually, you know what? Make whatever shape you want. I've done this in a rectangle shape. That's really nice. Um, it's really, you know, it doesn't matter. And the reason is we're going to bake this on a baking sheet. We don't put it in a pie form, so it doesn't need to be circular. So you can make whatever shape you want. Um, that is fine with me. Get creative. Um, it depends on your serving platter. Maybe you want to put it on a cutting board so a nice uh, rectangle shape would be great. Okay. This is pretty good, I think. Now, you'll see my edges aren't finished. Don't worry. This is the pie that has no worries. It's just, it is what it is. And you're going to like it because it's delicious. Okay, so I have my little disc here. I'm just going to take this part off. Running out of space for all my accoutrements here. Okay, I'm gonna set that here. And I have my very old baking sheet. And I'm just gonna pop that on there, right like so. Now, what else do I need? Let's see, awesome. Tuesday, <laughs> I don't know what it is about Tuesday. The landscaping day, did you hear them? It's like I'm trying to talk over them. At least we're not outside right now. That would be a problem. <laughs> okay. So I have my filling that I have made yesterday and refrigerated. And what we're going to do is pile it on there. So one thing is like, you don't want to overload. If you have extra, you're putting it on your toast in the morning or mixing it into your yogurt or your smoothies. So many options here. It's not going to waste. So what we do is we're going to fill and then it's kind of like making a pizza. <laughs> of course, I would come up with the pizza analogy. Um, so you want to leave 
a little bit of a crust because we're going to fold that over. I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So, you know, we're going to make it like a pizza. And you like a little crust on your pizza, or I do anyway, but definitely for your crustata, you want a little crust. A little bit more. Now we don't want to overstuff it. Another reason is because I'm actually going to add some sliced strawberries on the top. I'm going to show you that later because that really makes it look beautiful. Because as you can see, this kind of looks like jam smeared onto a pie crust. You know, not so pretty yet. But don't worry, things are going to get better. I promise. <laughs> I'm going to say that about everything right now. Things are going to get better. Okay. If you want to fill in any holes, I see a little hole here. I don't want any holes. No holes in my jam. Okay, so we've got that all filled. And what we're going to do is take these edges and flip them up and over. What determines a chutney? This is a great question. So a chutney is not really like a jam, and that is because a chutney has a little bit of spice to it. So in this case, I added fresh ginger to give it a kick. A chutney is also not as adherent as a jam. That's the word I'm using. But you know, a jam usually has added pectin, something to make it stronger um, and firmer and hold it together, almost like a jello. Um, but this is not. So it's much more loose and it has a little kick. You can make a savory chutney. I've done them with tomatoes, really nice. Um, so it's very adaptable and it's easy. I think that's the thing, it's easy. We don't have to worry about adding pectins and things like this. It's just reduced fruit with a little spice. Okay, so I'm gonna take these edges and fold them up. Now, when I do this, it might break a little bit, it's okay. Just push it back together. So it's gonna fold kind of like an envelope and you're gonna kind of keep folding. I brought my little dough scraper that I usually use for pizza, but this kind of really helps things. So we're gonna get this nice edge and we're gonna keep folding it over. And then, you know, don't worry, some of your edges are gonna overlap like this. You can push them together if you want. You don't have to. I kind of like the way this looks. I have to be honest. It's like, it's one of my favorite things. It's just so pretty and it just reminds me of having like dessert in a farmhouse outside and painting a picture for you guys. Like the cows are coming home and we've just had this wonderful meal. And now out comes the crostata. Look at this thing. So gorgeous. What do you think? Okay, we're not done yet. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, what determines a chutney? Yes, it does. Camellia is right. It definitely does have Indian roots. So ginger, you know, is often used in Indian cooking as well. So it, it is something that you'll often find in Indian cooking. And we are kind of appropriating that for the purpose of a pie not a bad thing when cultures come together like that. Okay, I have here some sliced strawberries and I mixed in a teaspoon of cornstarch just to thicken them and also uh, two tablespoons of granulated sugar so they macerate and bring out the sweetness. And then, this is the fun part, what you can do is arrange this in any pattern or just kind of throw them on there willy-nilly. I'm not going to judge you. But this is going to be our pretty top so that all of the chutney underneath is going to be hidden by this little dressing of freshly sliced strawberries. Um, you can use as many as you want. We're just going to kind of go through here and make a little ring and then fill in trying to look for my bigger slices. These are some fresh strawberries that I actually got at a local farm. Uh, it's called Crane Farm. And um, they grow their own strawberries. I didn't pick them, but they had them already picked for me. And they are just so good. They actually don't even need any sugar. They're that good. It's like 
this is just the time right now to get strawberries and it is a fun outdoor activity a lot of farms are opening up their farm stands and even if they're not letting you pick them right now you can definitely go and get them and i did this is my second batch second time i visited just for the strawberries I'm a bit obsessed with them okay let's see here do you yes oh yeah we're going there don't you worry arlene arlene reads my mind <laughs> We are not done even after the decorating piece because we're going to do a little finishing touch and I'm going to show you that. It's just going to make our tart or crostata even more beautiful. Okay, so I just have to fill in the holes. Not a fan of leaving the holes. Okay, perfect. Or not perfect. That's the whole point of a crostata is it's not perfect. Okay, we're gonna do an egg wash. So I have an egg that I've beaten with a little bit of water. And I've got my little pastry brush here. And I'm gonna do a little egg wash. This is gonna give our crust a nice glossy golden brown sheen when we bake it. You know, so it won't dry out. It's like sealant. Um, I just waterproofed uh, a picnic table outside. This is kind of like, what's that doing? It's giving it a nice varnish and sealing it from the elements. You want to do that to your pies as well as your patio furniture. <laughs> Take it from me. Okay. <laughs> I love a good analogy, even if it was a bad one. Entertained me a little bit. Okay. So we have our egg wash. Now I, I have to say, I have a lot of egg left over. I don't throw this out. I just mix this into the rest of my egg scramble in the morning. So, you know, nothing is wasted. Okay, and then I have, you could use regular granulated sugar, but I have this nice brown demerara sugar, and I'm gonna sprinkle that on the edges here. And this is gonna not only look beautiful, because it is gonna look beautiful, I have to tell you, but it is also gonna give you a really satisfying crunch when you bite into it um, it's just going to add a little texture and so that's going to be really nice and then it sticks to the egg wash like glue so it's not going to roll off this is our crostata you can use a liquid sweet sweetener like agave only baked with terrible honey that's a great question i actually need to look that up you know the sugar does something and it macerates the strawberries. And I don't know if it would work as well with honey. I think for a chutney, it would be okay because you're not looking for it to stick together, but I wanna do some research on that and get back to you. This is going in the oven for 30 minutes at 400 degrees. Um, it should get nice and golden brown on top. I would check it at 30 minutes just to make sure. If you think it's getting too brown, you can put a little foil around the edges so it doesn't get too brown, but, um, sorry, 30 minutes. So I would check it at 20 minutes just to make sure 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Now, Ta -da! this is our finished crostata. Ground almonds might also be nice. Yes, you could. You know, you could do some slivered almonds on the crust, whatever you like. You could decorate it as you will. So, I don't want to hold this up, but this looks beautiful. You can see the sliced strawberries really give it a nice appearance on top. The sugar gives it this nice crust. So, I'm going to cut this so you can see. And we're going to sample it together. Which piece do I want? We're going to take this one. Okay. So it is like, it's a very flat piece of pie also. You know, there's not, it's not, this is not a deep dish pie. More like a pancake. And then, here you go. So you can see where we folded it a little bit. You can see that little edge there and it's all beautifully sticking together. Um, let me tell you, this is a great breakfast, I have to say. So at this point, ice cream, whipped cream,
Cola Vita Balsamic Glaze, which I'll show you right now and we'll try for you just to make sure it's okay. We have this beautiful reduction of balsamic vinegar that we call our glaze. And we can put just a little on there and look how gorgeous that is. I mean, come on, it's sweet, it's tangy, it's good for dessert and for salads. Let's see. Thank you, Trisha. It does look pretty beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna try. I don't know, are you a crust first person on the pie or the, you know, the, the tip? I'm gonna eat the whole thing, so I guess it doesn't matter. We're gonna start here. That's really good. Mmm. I love it. The crust is like not too sweet. I would even add a little lemon zest into the crust. If you want to brighten it, that would be a really nice thing to do. And it's crumbly and it's, it's like a shortbread, oddly, with olive oil. Um, and the chutney is also really good. I will finish this later so I'm not too rude. I will be eating it though, don't you worry. Um, <laughs> all at once. <laughs> it's not too big. I think I could probably eat the whole slice at once. <laughs> Mint spray would be great, absolutely. So many things. You could do this with peaches. You could do this with blueberries, cherries, any kind of fruit really. And you know, that's the wonderful versatility. We have a couple of crostata recipes up on our recipe site right now, including this one. We also have one that uses pears and leeks for a savory version. And as you saw, the artichoke and spinach crostata, which is a savory version, that one makes a fantastic appetizer. So if you want to head over to Cola Vita Recipes and check that out, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you. Also, you can sign up for our newsletter so you can get the recap of all of this deliciousness and make sure you're staying up to date on exciting things like new label releases, very exciting things, um, in addition to new recipes. On Thursday at 3 p.m., we have a special wild card episode for you. So I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it is certainly, it's gonna be a wild, wild card. It's gonna be fun. So I hope to see you again here on Thursday. Um, and I know, New Jersey has so many great strawberry farms and so many great farms. So get out there and explore the wide world of farms and farm stands to find produce this summer. Um, so I hope to see you again on Thursday where we'll be doing something very exciting. Not another crostata. Um, and thank you so much for continuing to tune in. We really love it. Throw all your questions into the comments on Facebook and I will do my best once I've eaten my pie and cleaned up a bit to answer them. And uh, please follow us on Cola Vida um, on Facebook and on Instagram at Cola Vida USA so you can take part in the polls. Very important. I need your feedback. And always know when we're doing another broadcast. So thank you again and I will see you guys on Thursday. Ciao for now.